you may have seen this before it's a, a candle box I made after seeing it on um, the Antiques Road Trip uh, and on a later episode in the series uh, they had this uh, arts and crafts letter box which is a box that you screw on the back of your door uh, and when the postie puts the letters through they end up in here rather than on the floor so uh, it's got this nice panel on the front and it's dovetailed in the corners whereas this one is just butt jointed the reason they could do this is because the grain was running horizontally all the way around even on the back whereas this isn't it's vertical on the back and on the sides uh, so it's just butt jointed it's a similar sort of design similar shape uh, except it doesn't have this thing on the top for hanging it on the wall on this one um, it had a slot for the letters and underneath it just had a small hole which I assume it was for hanging it on. Uh, it's not very practical because it, it'd swing around a little bit. But someone had also put uh, a couple of mirror plates on, one either side. Whether they're original or not, I'm not so sure. Uh, they didn't look that well done, so uh, whether I put them on this or not, I don't know. Uh, but it's a nice thing, and um, the way I got the pattern is uh, because it was on the BBC, I went on iPlayer, uh, watched it again took some screenshots of it, uh, enlarged it to the size I assumed it should be, uh, and then traced it out. A bit of guesswork on the size and everything, but it looks about right. Um, I've seen a lot of these before, they're usually a bit narrower than that, uh, but this one was quite a chunky thing. So uh, this is my next project. Uh, this is the blank for the front panel. Uh, it's quarter sawn English oak and it's nicely figured all the way up it's very even um, I've marked out all the bits of the carving that need to be fretted out uh, I've not put any more information on as in uh, any extra lines that follow through when I'd be carving uh, because if I did that when I'm sawing it out I'll just end up following a line and I'll, I'll cut something I'm not supposed to cut so the only information there is for that process I have marked out the dovetailing. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, better to do the dovetailing first. Um, it's going to be stronger whilst working on it because there's not loads of holes very close up to it because that's only uh, three eighths of an inch from there to there, uh, which is what, about nine mil. Um, so if I'm chopping this out and there's a big hole here, uh, that might just break because the grain's running that way. Uh, it's not going to be as strong so if I do that first uh, then I'll move on to the fretting and then do the nice bit of the carving. the dovetailing at the front so the sides uh, I'm going to do the back as well before I actually uh, start on the carving uh, I did make a mistake of making the sides a little bit too thick uh, only by a millimetre but I didn't want to cut them in any deeper because I wanted to keep this measurement at 3 eighths um, so what I'm going to do is when it's glued together I'll plane the sides down until they're flush with the dovetails uh, it'll also get rid of any knife marks so um, that's, that's a bonus, I suppose. If we go to the back. The back's done in two pieces. So that's the bottom one. And then the top one goes up there, uh, leaving this gap for the letters. And also I have to make sure there's a little step there and then measure it and make sure it's the same as the front uh, to keep everything square. I'll set the gauge the same as the front one so I can mark the back the same size. I use a, a 1 in 8 and I've already marked out the, the spacing. So 
So I'll do that all the way around both sides and the uh, top piece as well, which just has one dovetail in it. I've finished the dovetailing um, and I've skimmed the sides down as well now. Uh, I've decided to do it now rather than leaving it later because there's little windows to cut in here and I don't want to be skimming it down after I've put those in. So um, I've done this now and it, it wasn't too bad, it didn't take very really long. So the next thing to do will be to knock it apart and start doing all this piercing for the carving. Now all the fretting's done, I can start putting on all these extra lines which will help me keep it symmetrical when I start doing the carving. carved this section first. Uh, it's usually better to do it all in one go really to keep it even but because I'm not quite sure how deep everything's to be cut I sort of slowly work my way down until I'm sort of happy with it because I'm working from photographs. Uh, it's not as easy as having the thing in front of you. So I've managed to get that bit done. It still needs a little bit of tidying up but it's basically the right shape now. So I can do the same on the other side. I can just copy it which is a lot easier now and I've got something to work from. Uh, and then the flower, 
I'll do that as a wand, I don't think that's too difficult, and the stem. Uh, parts of this may need to be recarved again uh, to make it fit uh, the stem, because this, this gets narrower from the front uh, to about that point there, and it comes back up again. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll carve that bit next, and then I'll work on the, uh, the flower and the stem. So I've, I've carved the other side now. Uh, it still needs a bit more work. It's still a little bit scruffy, that side, but uh, it, it all needs reworking anyway. Uh, I left it for about three weeks, so it, it gives you a, a fresh look at it, and I've noticed a lot of these lines I'm not 100% uh, happy with anyway. So uh, the next thing I want to do is, is get this stem done. Um, I need to thin it down there by about a third, and then taper it back up to full thickness down here, uh, and also carve the flower in. Uh, then anything that connects to these bits I can rework uh, if they're not right. Uh, and then once all of it's done I can rework any bits I'm not happy with and get it as good as I can. Uh, I've finished the carving now. I've also undercut slightly um, where the leaves roll over and you see the other side of them. Um, so I just turned it over and took some away here, here, and a little bit at the bottom. Uh, it looks like you ought to um, do a bit more undercutting, but the original one didn't, so I'm going to leave it now. I'm fairly happy with it, so uh, the next thing I can do is uh, put the little windows in the side and then I can glue the thing together and start moving on a bit more with it.
So I've cut the rebate out and I've left myself about a two mil lip, uh, which I'll just have to round over uh, and then I can start gluing the thing together. Uh, I've got it glued together now. Uh, it was a bit of a wrestling match because all the timber had, had cupped slightly, um, which is unusual because it's quarter sawn. It, it, they usually stay flat, but because the grain's running that way, that's quite a long, small piece really um, for it to stay flat. Uh, the dovetailing's not as good as I, I usually get it. Um, it's a little bit gappy, uh, especially on the front. The back's okay, which is, I prefer it was the other way around. Uh, there's a few knife marks as well. I tend to be a little bit heavy handed with the knives uh, because with antiques usually it doesn't matter because it's side of drawers. It's, it's just, you know, showing the construction of it and the way it's done. It doesn't usually matter. Uh, but with this, because it's on show, it, you shouldn't have them really. So I'm going to see if I can scrape them out. This top piece, I tried putting that in, but I couldn't get it pulled in tight, uh, especially with trying to get all the others as well. Uh, so I've pulled it out and I've cleaned the glue off, so I'm going to do that again. I'll clamp some oak battens on uh, so I can clamp it across there and pull it in nice and tight. Uh, the base I'm going to screw on, which gives me access uh, to putting the glass in later on when it's finished. Um, if I glued it on and then I tried to do it from the top, especially if it gets broken in the future and you have to replace it. Um, I usually, usually they, they putty these things in, but the putty gets rock hard when eventually when it dries. Um, you can heat it up a little bit to, to soften it to get it out, but it's not going to be easy inside that box to clean out. Uh, plaster's another option which I use, uh, but I'll probably just make some wooden beading and hold it in with that, which will make things a little bit easier. Because this front panel was cooked quite badly, uh, just as an extra precaution, I've um, drilled a 3 mil hole down the, on the four corners and just turned some uh, oak dowels and glued them in, just to stop it popping out in the future. Uh, I just don't trust it because it's quite a bit of pressure on that. I started forming the moulding uh, around the base with a, a block plane. So I marked out uh, where it finishes on the top and the bottom, which is just about an eighth of an inch in, and also the high point around the outside edge. So I'll round that over to that point, and that over to that point, and then I'll just sand it down, and whatever I need to get rid of on the back, I'll just band saw it off. finished the base now and I've just trimmed this down. Um, I've held the base on with a few posies for the time being but when it's finished I'll replace those with um, some nice old brass slotted screws. I've put this top piece in. Uh, I'm not sure if I put it in the wrong way around or not because there's quite a big gap there um, which is really annoying me so I'm gonna repair it by uh, cutting a slot down there widening it slightly. Uh, and then letting in a piece of oak. Uh, it's a, from the uh, same piece as this anyway, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll repair that.
Uh, so next thing I'm going to do is start the lid, which is this. Um, it's got this curved edge on the front, which gives you a bit of a lip uh, as a handle to lift the lid open. Uh, and it's got that moulding. But that's just on the, um, the curved bit at the top. Uh, it's actually fairly square on the ends. So what I'll have to do is, uh, I'll work this moulding first, whilst it's still straight. Uh, I'll probably do it with a router and a block plane just to finish it off. Um, and then cut uh, this shape out next. And I'll just have to see what happens. I've got a bit extra if, it, if I'm not happy with it, but I'm, I think, because I can't really see on the um, pictures what it's like, but I'm assuming it's, it is something like that. Uh, and it'll just sort of flow in from that shape to a virtually square. So the end of that there lines up with the corners. So hopefully that'll work. It's not looking that good really, um, so I'm going to see if I can carve it in some sort of uh, acceptable shape. Yeah, I think that'll work a little bit more faffing about with that and it should come out alright. So this has come out well, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that, it's exactly what I wanted it to look like. So when it's on, it gives you enough room to get your fingers under to lift the lid. So the next thing to do is cut the width of the lid at an angle which is going to be half of whatever this is which is 136 degrees uh, which is 68 degrees so that will be cut 68 degrees uh, and I can actually just flip that over and it will give me the same for the top
So that angle's correct now. Um, the back of this needs trimming down so it's flush with the back. Uh, but I'm going to have to decide what to do about the hinges before I move on any further. Now these are the hinges that are on the um, original. Uh, I thought they looked a bit heavy and a bit a bit clumsy looking. Um, they look more like a, a stock item, something you know off the shelf. Uh, so I found some other designs which looked a bit lighter because they're pierced. Um, that one is with a two inch hinge. I'm not actually going to make the hinge. I've got some old butt hinges which I'll use. So I'll just fit them and this will just be a false strap that'll just be pinned or screwed onto the, um, the lid. Uh, I thought that was a bit wide so I thought if I cut one of the knuckles off uh, it'll get rid of one of the holes. Um, the other hole's not in the right place but I'm not bothered about that and that doesn't really matter because you don't actually see it anyway once it's on. Um, so I redrew it smaller so this is without that knuckle it's one and five eighths. Uh, so I've fretted that out out of a piece of um, 16 gauge brass. Uh, so I think that, that should look alright. So I'll do another one of those. Now the reason I won't use a smaller hinge, if you get one that's say one and a half inches, that width is reduced as well on them. And I need, when that goes on there, if it's shorter, it gets higher up. Because this isn't square, uh, the screw will end up coming up through the, the face of the, um, of the wood, of the lid. So um, I want to keep the, the wider hinge and cut this down rather than using a, a smaller hinge. It's always awkward doing them on the, an angle. It's much easier doing it when it's square-ended. So that's the uh, box finished now. Um, I did reduce the width of the lid a little bit and put a slight radius on because it was just a little bit too wide. Um, I've made some pieces for the tops of the hinges. Uh, it looks a bit lost there with nothing on it so uh, all they need is a couple of holes drilling and screws putting in. They'll sell them with a bit of tape at the moment just to keep them in place. Uh, cut all the beading, uh, a couple of bits of glass, a little hole in the back I should have done before I uh, assembled it but it, it was easy enough to do. Uh, everything's been flushed off now, sanded and next thing is uh, staining and polishing. The way I've done the beading for the glass is I've put a little bevel on the inside edge of all the pieces so what happens is the, the long ones go in first and then the short ones actually lock the long ones in position so you only need a pin in these and not in those. So once these are pinned in, uh, it'll stay put. So there's less to sort of lever out if anything happens, if anything gets broken in the future. Just makes life a little bit easier. 
I've aged up the hinges and the woodwork. Uh, I don't like polished brass on things like this. Uh, the dovetailing's actually come out okay. Uh, it looks fine. Uh, there are a few knife marks I'm not so keen on. Uh, I couldn't get them out. Um, but they're okay. I, I can live with it. It's not. It's not that bad. This box actually won't fit on my front door because um, my letterbox is vertical and also it opens up against a brick wall so there's actually physically no space for it. Uh, but that's not why I made it. I made it because I, I liked it. It was a nice thing and, and worth copying. Um, but it's come out well, it's come out fine. I'm quite pleased with it.